All right, uh, everyone, so we'll make a start. It's again going to be a, uh, well, not brief, but for about 45 minutes at least. So we're going to uh, talk about uh, stability analysis. Stability in the, we, we talked about the numerical schemes uh, last week, so uh, we're going to uh, talk about how the um, numerical schemes will work and how stable they are and uh, how to get the stability analyzed. So uh, there are two uh, main schemes, uh, ex explicit and implicit. Um, then we talk about convergence. And uh, we'll uh, do the example of uh, one de heat uh, equation as well. And uh, then uh, we'll talk about um, conversion of uh, PDE to FDE. Uh, so PDE is a partial differential equation and FDE is a finite differential equation. Uh, what is um, stability in numerical schemes? Uh, so, and uh, we'll talk about what is the, the effect of convergence. What is meant by convergence, by the way? And uh, all these topics are related to the solving. So, uh, <coughs> The relationship between the partial differential equation and the finite difference equation. So uh, you have the governing uh, partial differential equation. So this is the this is our target, and you dis discretize uh, into algebraic equations. So partial differential equation into algebraic equations means plus minuses uh, multiplications and uh, as well. And then uh, it, with that you get an approximate solution uh, and uh, st then comes uh, stability. So your solution, uh, if you get a solution, it's stable. If you don't get a solution, it's not stable. So convergence, what is meant by convergence? Convergence means uh, your, uh, when you iterate your error going down, so the, the, uh, that's what is meant by convergence. So, um, if, it, if, it, if it diverges, that means uh, you, will, you will get an answer all the time very different to what you expected. Okay, it, it goes up larger and it becomes larger and larger and it will uh, crash at some point. Uh, so, <clears throat> what you are looking to get is the exact solution to the governing equation, which you can't do uh, through analytical methods. So, what you do is you discretize, write a, write a, write a set of algebraic equations and then uh, uh, get an approximate solution and you go back and forth with that solution and, and get, get it converged. Yes. Um, so uh, we talk about consistency. Consistency means uh, your partial differential, e sorry, your algebraic equation representing the governing partial differential equation. Yes. So that so if there is a big difference, that it's not consistent. So um, that's that's what is meant by consistency in Lehman's term. So uh, what is so uh, when you, when you take uh, so, mesh going to zero means if you have a really fine mesh, yes, your partial differential equation minus your finite difference, uh, difference equation is the, is the truncation error basically. So the difference between the partial differential equation and the finite difference, uh, difference equation is the truncation error. So you are talking about it with a very fine mesh. So if if the if if the mesh size goes to if the size of the mesh goes to zero, your error should also go to zero. So that is what is meant by consistency. Yes. So when your when your mesh size goes large, your error goes large as well. Yes. So um, stability means uh, you you have two types of errors. Uh, um, round off errors and truncation errors. So, um, so if your errors are not if your errors are not growing 
when you keep on iterating, keep on doing, going back and forth, so that that will be, that is stab, stable. If it is going, if it is becoming larger and larger, it's not stable. It's it's diverging. So when the error tending to zero means convergence. Error going up means diverging. Uh, <clears throat> there is a theorem called a uh, uh, Lax theorem of, of uh, stability. We'll uh, talk about it later, but uh, with, with Lax theorem of stability, you can check convergence basically uh, early now. 1D heat equation. So, 1D heat equation is the partial differential equation is given by that dava u over dava t is equal to alpha dava u dava squared u over dava x squared. So, um, uh, that, that is the form. Yes. Um, then, uh, you, you can write the finite difference equation <coughs> for this one. So, you, you rearrange the terms, you take all the terms to the to one side of this one, so that's the, that would be a par partial differential equation. So, that when you take that to the the, take the right hand side part of the equation to the left hand side, the right hand side should be equal to zero. Yes. Um, and then you can write your finite difference, uh, difference equation uh, in, in, in such a way. So that will be a point i and n. So i in x direction, uh, uh, n in y direction, this is actually t, isn't it? So you are talking about distance x and time t. Um, can you take a minute and understand the terms of these equations? So what you're doing here is you write an equation for W over W T here. Yes? So that will be delta T because you have W T. And then you write an equation for that part. That would be alpha is there, that, that delta x squared because that's delta x squared. And that would be your so what's the order in there? Uh, this is first order, this is second one, yes? And the rest is the truncation error because you, you, you are not going beyond that. So, yes? So, that's, that's a truncation error. So, this is a Taylor series expansion basically, what we talked about last time. And truncation error means your, your approximation doesn't take into take into account of that. So you make it zero. So the difference between exact solution to that and that would be the error. Yes? So that is your approximate equation. So, uh, which means, if you go back, that, 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 would, that would be your finite difference equation. And you have written it again, uh, taking two parts to the two sides. So then uh, <coughs> you write, you rearrange the terms uh, so that you, you have uh, u n plus 1, u i n plus 1, uh, taken to one side. Yeah, so you will rearrange this equation. So, so this is, now, here, you get an answer for u i n plus 1, that is the second point, yes? u i n plus 1 is the second point, in terms of, uh, U, U I, in terms of the other terms, U I N plus 1 to U I N and U I minus 
one. So, but here, that is your target, isn't it? So that is what you want to get. So that this is this is called uh, an explicit scheme. Okay. So that this is an explicit scheme. So you get the answer on the right hand side or the left hand side. Next step. So in an implicit scheme, so th that, that, that is again the same uh, equation, uh, we, <coughs> we define something called uh, lambda, so that is lambda, lambda is, say, say lambda is alpha delta t over delta x squared, yeah. say lambda is that, and then uh, you substitute terms in here with, with lambda. Okay, so you can uh, write uh, this equation by substituting with lambda, terms with, with lambda. Then what you do is you don't solve for this term, u i n plus 1, you solve for lambda. Okay. You, you get an answer for lambda, then when you substitute the answer for lambda, you get the answer for the equation. So that is not a straightforward method of doing it, you, you, you go around it by doing that. So that is called an implicit scheme. <coughs> so <coughs> for, for, for an Im implicit scheme, you write that equation in a matrix form. So once you have written in a, a matrix form, you can solve this matrix using, for example, MATLAB or your or, or any um, numerical solving method. You are not going to solve this, but you know what you are, you are learning the principle, yes. But uh, an explicit scheme, you will be doing an example there from, yes. So when we talk about stability, uh, in this uh, scheme, so, so say you um, add a delta t to the uh, to your equation. Delta t means you are you are iterating basically. Isn't it? The next time step. So you are adding a delta t to to your um, equation, meaning uh, you are looking at the next time step. Not the next uh, phys physical step, next step, next time step. Yeah. So that means uh, you're, you're talking about u, u x t plus delta t. So next time step. So we, earlier we were talking about just at delta t. We were not talking about delta t plus. Delta t. So now you're talking about the next time step. And uh, you um, add that to all parts of the equation. Then uh, <coughs> at t equals zero, we, we can we introduce an error. So so you at u x t, you, you 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 say this is this would be this function would be phi t, psi t, and. Uh, then you introduce an error. So, with introducing this error, you what you what you are going to check is the stability of the scheme. So this is called the one common uh, one, sorry one Newman stability analysis. So after substituting that error into the equation, uh, <coughs> you get an equation for psi. You just follow this later on, but what you what you are trying to get is that you get an equation for psi t plus delta t, and uh, then you you um, 
you, you have this equation psi t 1 oh, minus 4 alpha delta t de, delta x squared sine squared beta delta x b uh, over 2. So now and, and then you get an equation for so this is this is psi t delta t so the, and this is psi t plus delta t so you divide that by that and that is that would be your g. So this is called the amplification factor. Okay? So this is called the amplification factor and the, the importance of this is this amp, the, the, ampli, the, the modulus of the amplification, amplification factor G is less than 1 and you get uh, with, with that your lambda will become less than half So this amplification factor will tell you how big your error is or how small your error is. Okay. So if it is amplifying fast, your error will be large. So for, for stability, this has to be less than zero. G modulus uh, of G has to be less than zero. Less sorry, less than one. Less than one. Okay. All lambda should be less than. You don't have to buy out the derivation of this. You've got these notes, just but you need to know what it is. Okay, read it again at some point. So uh, implicit and explicit solution. So we'll uh, we'll have a look at uh, this uh, in a minute. And uh, it's a parabolic partial differential equation. What is a parabolic equation? Remember uh, parabolic equation. <coughs> the gate equation is a parabolic equation. Uh, par so what's the formula of parabola? Parabola. Yeah. So x squared. X squared plus two. Yeah. That's a parabola. Thing. So <laughs> if you say x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, that's a certain. So. Um, <coughs> This is uh, th these are different uh, step sizes. Uh, so if you, when you, so so that that would be your initial so that would be your exact solution, perhaps. Yeah. So that that would be your initial initial solution, and then you iterate. So you have time steps: zero, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, forty. So you get that that much of difference in go going through <laughs> different time steps. So uh, that is for a so this is for a the theoretical stable step size. This is for a theoretically unstable step size. So that would be your so uh, that, that would be a stable solution, so that would be an unstable solution. Then, uh, so, so, so these are for different um, delta t or delta x squared. That, that would be 10, that would be 5, and that would be 15. So this is very unstable. That's, that would be a stable one. So that's the uh, one day heat equation. So again, it's a that, as we said, it's a, it's a parabolic equation. So that's your partial differential equation. Yes. So that C, C would be your alpha. So you are going to solve from x equals zero to x equals a. So that a is the length of the road. Initial condition is given as u x zero. 
is equal to fx, so that is the solution. Z zero, so x goes from zero to a. Boundary condition, u zero t is equal to g one t, so that's your initial boundary initial boundary condition. So u a t is g two t, so that would be a uh, other boundary condition. So and t is between zero and big T is the time. Yeah? So you are sol solving uh, through through space and time. So uh, so your your space size would be uh, discretized discretized size would be delta x, and t delta t would be your time step. So when you apply the boundary conditions, so uh, and uh, and uh, you, you you have your initial conditions uh, here. Say for, for for example, so for an explicit Euler method, uh, <coughs> you take it as a i j plus one here mm -hmm. and i j here i j. I plus one j, I minus one j. So then you can check your difference schemes. So for a forward difference schemes, u t is equal to one over k. U uh, i j, i j plus one minus u i j. For a, uh, then you have to. So you are, you are, you are for for the time you take a forward difference uh, scheme. Uh, And, and you take at uh, time uh, j. Yes. So when you write the equations for uh, for an explicit Euler method, uh, you can write your u t as such, and then u i plus j plus one as this equation. So once you have written uh, the equation you can check for your stability r uh, which which will become 0.5 it has to be less than 0.5 between 0 and 0.5 so remember your alpha earlier uh, sorry lambda earlier so all of this like axis does and then we can we can know if this table makes sense by looking at the axis this is So that that your lambda here yeah. could be that here. Uh, yeah. So uh, in explicit Euler method, you uh, try and uh, solve this one basically. So for for different R values, you 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 have different values for U I J. So, uh, and you get negative co coefficients if you use large R values. Yeah, so that would be unstable. So that would be stable. So this is um, the solution for R equals 0.5. If you if your R is greater than that, so you go to uh, so if it is in unstable, what you have what you can do is you can go to an implicit scheme. So that's that's your alternative. So uh, so that is R equals one. So that would be very unstable. So. Uh, When you use an implicit method, so you again write the uh, forward difference equation and the scheme and the uh, central difference scheme, and then uh, you write this equation uh, in a, in a matrix form, in a matrix form, and you calculate for uh, lambda. So 
Once you have done this, your, your scheme will be always uh, stable. So, the practical application of this is now you have choices, right? When you go to the iteration scheme, you have choices. It asks whether you want to use an explicit method or an implicit method. So, if it, if it crashes in an explicit method, you go back and switch it to an implicit method, it may not crash. Yeah? <coughs> because it can crash because of your... It, it, it can crash because of your, your mesh is rubbish or something like that. So that then the scheme cannot help, but it is so. Good problem, so the scheme can help. So this is a implicit Euler method for R equals uh, two. So uh, so that's uh, stable. Okay. So uh, <coughs> when the conditions change. So you, you can, uh, so, the, so that's your uh, different um, boundary conditions. Uh, uh, when it changes, uh, you can still check what happens with the implicit and explicit uh, steps. So, uh, so this is t equals 3.05. Uh, so th these are the answers for uh, uh, different uh, time steps. And uh, four point four t equals point one. That would be your answer. T equals point zero five. That would be your answer. And with that, you can get answers for different uh, points of in in here. So that means uh, so th these are these solutions are quite similar. Okay but uh, with an error of about uh, 5. Um, so, <coughs> then you, can, you, you have time-dependent boundary condition. So, if you have a time-dependent boundary condition, you will get a different uh, solution. So, this is a time-dependent boundary condition. Okay. Because you get, a, you get an answer for t is equal to 0.1, you get 49, t equals 0.05, 54. That is because your boundary conditions are time dependent. Your, your, it, the boundary condition depends on t. Yeah? Right. So, so uh, uh, this is like uh, you have a rod. You have you are applying a heat which is fluctuating. Yeah. Uh, temperature here is fluctuating, say. So the temperature here should also fluctuate, yes. So that's a time dependent boundary condition. Great. So, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, implicit and explicit schemes, we talked about convergence and we looked at the 1D heat equation example as well. So, explicit uh, schemes are stable for certain conditions only and implicit, uh, <laughs> sorry. Implicit schemes are unconditionally stable. Yeah. Uh, the question? The advantage of explicit is that it should be quicker. Explicit would be quicker most of the time, or you can crash. Yeah. So try explicit first. Yeah, try explicit first and then it doesn't work. Because you, you know why it is 
quicker, yes? So, you have a, so when, it, when it is implicit, you have to solve for the Jacobian first and then get, get the answer. Yes? So, so it's more work for the computer, the numerical scheme. So, to, to. Getting interested, isn't it? How, is it, how, how are you doing, your, uh, doing with your assignment? So this uh, finishes the lecture anyway. Thank you for listening, but we'll have a quick discussion uh, in a second. Yes.